It's Hope's a good boy. Thanks, boy. Drop. Good boy. Pressure's off. <laughs> <laughs> Getting into shooting in the UK is a lot more difficult. Like access to land is a lot harder. Uh, like my granddad used to shoot in Norfolk, which was driving from London was a three or four hour drive just to get somewhere where he could affordably shoot. So when I moved over here, I always wanted to get into it. I started joining by joining uh, Claygrounds, got into that way, got myself a Labrador, started picking up. Gone from there, moved into this area where I am now, and luckily I have amazing landlords who allow me access to all this land and allow us to put down birds as well. So we kind of work it as, I act as their kind of unofficial gamekeeper. They put the birds down in the, in the summer. Luckily I'm a teacher, so three months holiday, I can spend a good bit of the summer prepping the pen and looking after the birds. Amazing opportunity for me to get land in this area and to have this outside my back door. There's two or 300 acres of land here. But I found like Ireland, it's a lot friendlier and easier to access hunting than it is in the UK. The UK is quite financially restricted for how much it costs to shoot there. So. Island affords you a lot more opportunities. Rough shooting and deer stalking is pretty much as good as it gets me. It's just going out here, out here with your dog and going, spending two hours outside and hopefully coming home with your dinner. Like it doesn't get any better than that. Like it puts you properly connected with what you're eating. If you're actually, like nothing, I don't really, other than occasional vermin and fox control, mode 99% of the stuff I shoot, I eat. And I think that's, like for me, that's a massive important thing because I've no interest in taking an animal's life and then not using it. What I found this year, there's plenty of birds about, but birds in the past have held more in the, in, in the cover, whereas these lot this year have tended to run a lot. So it's been a lot actually harder to hunt them. And is that a different breed of pheasant? No, same breed from same uh, same supplier as well. So I don't know, I don't know if it's just the conditions this year or whether because they were kept in a pen for longer, they've got more, more likely to run than flush. So I'm not sure. I'm feeling the pressure to shoot a bird for the cameras now. <laughs> I know how I feel. <laughs> what cock, what cock? I didn't want to shoot right over your head there. <laughs> Safety first. I've actually not seen woodcock on here before, so we've seen snipe, but it's actually a nice sign to see a few over. And my granddad died when he was like 93, a few years ago. And just when he was, like, he was in hospital, sort of semi on his last few months. And I managed to get a, I went over, we sh when I was at Shelton picking up, we shot, uh, someone shot a woodcock. So I brought it over for him, because it was his favorite thing ever. I made him wood woodcock sandwiches in his hospital bed. So it was a nice little sad story. <laughs> he did love it to be fair though. Oops, good boy. Thanks, boy. Good boy. Hey. Nice. Nice tail as well. Pressure's off. <laughs> now I can relax and enjoy my shooting like normal. That's a nice. Yeah, that is just his bird. They came on there. They did really well this year, to be fair. What was amazing about rough shooting, how long those birds will sit there. We walked past them, stood there, they were, it was three meters away, and then until the bird gets right on it, they won't flush. There's just so much wildlife on it. It is a, it is a beautiful wood. It's, there's not that many old native Irish woods around. So plenty of beech and oak in there and ash. And then like three or four weeks ago, like when it started to turn, and it was all, all the beach tree in there just went golden, so it was beautiful. Stay. So, I stay, stay. I don't know what to do here, whether there's, there's always birds in that corner. If you're coming from the wood, they're going to flush that way. If you're coming from this side, they're probably going to flush into the wood. <laughs> uh, maybe if I go into the wood from the bottom, I 
direction. We'll go, we'll go across, we'll cross the fence here and go into that field and send them dogs in from the top. But I'll keep her close. Let's see what happens. Come on. Good boy. Nice. Another nice bird. Like that much work, like two hours of work to get this, or two and a half hours of work of hunting around, the dogs working. I think that's part of the, the whole experience. And we're fully connected to this. Like this, we shot this, the dogs retrieved it. It's gonna hang up for a couple of days and it's gonna go and we're gonna have it for dinner. We're gonna use every part of it. So I think that's what's special about it. I think it's in our, sort of in our DNA really. Fishing as well, even the same thing with fishing, the buzz of actually hunting something and providing something. I think that's built into us. And I think the feeling you get from it is something I think we've all got it in, in us, and a lot of people are so disconnected from their food. Like the closest they're gonna get is they're gonna see it in a wrapped up bag somewhere on a Tesco shelf. Whereas this, we've been out and hunted it, so. Not everyone has the opportunity to do it as well, so I'm lucky I have the opportunity to do it. But it is, like it does have that, a different feeling when you've hunted it yourself. So yeah, great day out. <laughs>